Well, Minister Farrakhan, don't you think that, 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 that there's something that you should apologize for? Please. <laughs> I say, y'all haven't apologized for what you did to black people. I haven't done nothing to you all but tell the truth. And if that hurts you, you should never have existed. I have anything to apologize for. I told Jesse, don't do that. Don't do that, Jesse. You already apologized. You called them high me. Shouldn't have did that. <laughs> well, now you went to the Jewish synagogue and you apologized. That's it, man. If I apologize, you accept my apology, I go on. I ain't got to keep on apologizing every time I see you apologize. apologize, apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse trying to get back in the good graces of the Jews, and the Jews keep their foot steady. They keep their foot steady in his backside. He go to Russia instead of talking about us catching hell. He talking about some Soviet Jews. Show how humanitarian he is. Don't you know these white folk gonna give a damn what he says? They ain't gonna vote for him in 1988. Cause he did say hi me and hi me town. Have you repented of that? It's gonna be like Chappaquiddick <laughs> for that Kennedy boy. Every time Kennedy think he about ready to run, he raises his head up there and say, Mary Ann Kopechny, Chappaquiddick. He said, uh oh. <laughs> Jack in the box, he goes back down, wait for another time. <laughs> They're not going to ever let Jesse forget that. Never, never, never. The Jews are the most unforgiving white people you ever want to meet. They don't let nothing. If you ever offend them, keep on stepping. Because, hey, if you're looking for them to forget it, and, and, and you repent, you're going to have to lay at their foot every day, let them walk over you, and then come back in, and then do the, do the whole lot. And then they'll say, maybe if you keep this up, for a hundred years I may think about forgiving you. I'll never have them for my friends. And who the hell cares? I don't need their friendship. I'm going to whoop their butt as long as I see them coming wrong. I'm going to down them every time with the truth. I'm not going to back down. They'll have to kill me. Because they're wrong. And they know they're wrong. And you know they're wrong. But you're too weak and cowardly when it comes to Jews. To stand up. And that's the last oppressor you got who's claiming to be your friend. Once you can move him to the side, you are free at last. The Jew got you. Got black people jam up talking about our black Jewish relationship. You ain't got no relationship with no Jews. All you black folk in here, which one of you got relationship with Jews? You too far down on the totem pole to have a relationship with Jews. Except you cleaning their house. Now that is a relationship of sorts. Harry, I want my windows cleaned. Sarah, did you dust the furniture, Sarah? You did a good job with the food today, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't have the money today. I'm going to give you an old dress that my grandmother yes. used to wear. Bring it home. <laughs> you ain't got no relationship with them. It's the bourgeois Negroes that got a relationship with them. 
and they have a relationship with them so that they can keep your bourgeois middle class Negroes hoodwinked so that the middle class Negroes can sell you the lie that they are your best friend. How the hell can they be your best friend and you in this shape? You ain't got no friend. If you got a friend, what the hell is he doing for you? You can't be poor, ragged, and hungry and have a rich Jew for a friend and he's your friend? Talk back to me. You ain't got no friend. And that's your problem. That's why God had to come and be our friend and then make friends for us all the way around the world.